And welcome to Chapter 1, Section 6. We're going to be talking about dimensional analysis, among a number of other things. All right, every measurement, with pretty much no exceptions, uh, every measurement has two parts. Okay, so has the number and the unit, a.k.a. the dimension. Okay. So when people talk about, you know, living in the fourth dimension or something like that, they could be talking about almost anything, because a meter is a dimension. Meters squared, there's two dimensions there, meters and meters. Um, you know, a newton, remember, uh, the measurement of force is kilograms, meters per second squared. Okay, there, there's four dimensions in there. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a bit of fluff. All right, so uh, solving problems, doing any sort of math work, really, requires you to pay attention to your units. And uh, that is going to be a problem for a number of reasons. Uh, first off, because you're probably more familiar with the imperial system. Um, AKA the English, you know, uh, feet, uh, pounds, uh, let's see, what other units might we have? Bushels, you know, things like that. Um, you know, just sort of the rough and ready nonsense uh, that, well, not nonsense, but the rough and ready system of measurement that people came up with once upon a time based on, you know, yes, the human body. You know, one foot, you know, the inch is based upon, you know, the, the, the last knuckle of your thumb, um, 12 inches per foot, uh, three feet per yard, and the yard is the distance from your nose to your thumb, more or less, um, and your foot is based upon your actual foot. Uh, let's see, then there are 1,760 yards to the mile. Um, I think it's uh, seven miles to the league. And you could probably keep on going. There are also rods and cables. And, uh, and, and, and well, there's just a whole lot of different English measurements. Uh, pounds, there's 14 pounds to the stone. Oh, and can't forget, uh, sort of... In between, there's four inches per hand for all you horse lovers. 14 pounds per stone, uh, bushels, no idea. I'm not a farmer. The point is we don't use the imperial system because it kind of sucks in a lot of ways. All these really, really strange conversion factors. Uh, we use it in our everyday life just because, you know, by the time you turn 20 in the United States, you've had 20 years to get used to all this garbage. Um, instead of the imperial system, we use the scientific system, or in fact, the SI system, the System International, or International System. This was devised back when the French were uh, the big shots, hence why it's uh, in French. Now, um, the System International is all base 10. So converting between units is a heck of a lot easier. So that is one of the reasons why we use it. The other is that they invented it more or less whole cloth, so it doesn't use any country's units of measurement, which was kind of a big deal when they came up with it. You know, nobody wanted to be beholden to the units of another country. You know, those beef-eating Englishmen with their stupid imperial system. Our system in base 7.3 is so much... No, no. They just went with something that was completely you know, that everyone could use. Uh, there, are, there are some exceptions to the base 10 rule that are simply unavoidable. Um, and one of those is time. Um, the, the unit of time in the system international is the second. Uh, other units, by the way, are the gram or the kilogram, um, the meter, uh, 
let's see, the bell for measuring time or measuring sound. Uh, you have Kelvin or Celsius for measuring temperature, uh, things like that. Now, um, time is measured in seconds, and there are 60 seconds per, uh, per minute and 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours in a day, uh, 365.25 days in a year. And that's just because our system of time is based upon living on the planet Earth, and the planet Earth was not set up to be convenient for decimal systems. Uh, and there's, I mean, it, it's there, there have been ideas proposed for getting rid of this and replacing it with a decimal system. I think the French tried it during the French Revolution when they were doing a whole lot of crap. Uh, they also rearranged the calendar and renamed all the months. Um, that didn't stick. Neither did the decimal system. This is almost certainly never, ever going to change. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the next thing. Uh, a, 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 a thing that you're going to have to practice at, a thing that's going to kind of trip you up. Okay, see, science works at a very wide range of scales. Okay, so for example, uh, distance. If we take a look at meters, we have example, the diameter of the hydrogen nucleus. Okay, so we're talking about a hydrogen atom, and one hydrogen nucleus has a diameter of 0 Uh, that's 14 zeros, then 175. 0.000000000000175 meters. It's very, very small. Uh, and by contrast, we have the diameter of the Milky Way, you know, the galaxy we live in. And its diameter is 9460730000000. Zero 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 meters. Um, frankly, uh, those numbers are kind of absurd to try and work with in any reasonable fashion. If you tried to talk about these in meters, you would find yourself uh, hating yourself very very quickly. Uh, you'd have to. Uh, Take up most of every page, every sentence, in fact, just repeating the number zero over and over and over again. These take up a lot of space, they take a lot of time, it's inconvenient. And you can also think about this in terms of sig figs. This is one of the things sig figs is really good for. Because, you look at this, you have all these leading zeros. No info, okay? They are not significant. Similarly, all these trailing zeros, they come before the decimal place, and they are likewise not significant. Okay, they don't really give us any genuine information. There's no measurement there we need to worry about. Okay, all that we care about for the diameter of the nucleus of hydrogen is those last three numbers there at the end. Okay, that's where we have the significant information, the three sig figs right there at the end. Similarly, and the diameter of the Milky Way, the significant information is in these six significant figures here at the start of the number. Those are the parts of the measurement we actually care about. Now, there are two ways to condense these numbers and make them manageable. They do more or less the exact same thing. They get rid of all those zeros. Um, but one solution uh, comes from the era uh, when calculator was a job description, the other solution is more or less for the era where calculator describes a mechanical or electronic tool. We use both of these systems kind of interchangeably, but um, the, the, the newer system, the, the calculator as tool system, is uh, becoming more popular uh, as time goes on because we have more and more sophisticated calculators. But first, let's go ahead and talk about prefixes. 
scientific prefixes. Okay, for units. All right, so scientific prefixes. What they do is they tell you to, to move the decimal place. They talk about the size of the unit. Okay. So you can have uh, nano, which is symbolized by the letter N. Following that is micro. Let's uh, stay consistent here. Micro. Okay, that is the Greek letter mu. Um, it's the letter U, and then you just draw a straight line down on the left. Okay. Uh, so after micro comes milli, which is just the letter M. And then nothing, which doesn't have a prefix. You know, that means it's just the regular unit. So it could be meters or grams or seconds. Um, and then after that, we have kilo which is the letter K, then mega, which is the letter M. Let's go up to giga, which is the letter G. Okay, notice that this is a capital M, this is a capital G, uh, but this is a lowercase k. We reserve the right to be inconsistent. Okay, so what do these tell us? These tell us that we're looking at something very, very small. These tell us that we're looking at something big. Okay. So this is one one thousandth. So there are one thousand millimeters in one meter. Micro is one one thousandth again. So there are 1,000 microns or micrometers in one millimeter. And then nano is 1 1,000th one again. So there are 1,000 nanometers in one micron or one micrometer. And the getting bigger works the same way, only now they're getting bigger, so it's times a thousand, times a thousand, times a thousand. Okay. So there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram, 1,000 kilograms in a megagram, and 1,000 megagrams in one gigagram. And that's what the unit prefixes are for. Now, I wrote it out like this uh, just because it's, um, I think it's a little bit easier to remember. You know, every step you take, you know, you're, you're shifting by three decimal places. So say you have 342.7 uh, grams. You can go in this direction and you'll have 0 0.3427 kilograms. All you do is, you know, you shift one, two, three decimal places to the left. It's sort of like the decimal place stays in one spot and you move the number to the right. Okay, going from grams to kilograms, you're moving to the right. You just pull the number to the right and the decimal spot, the decimal stays where it is. Uh, or you can move in the other direction. Say we're going from milli to micro. So, uh, so uh, uh, 342.7 millimeters. Okay, we're pulling to, let's, I don't have much room, so we're pulling it to the left. How many nanometers is that? Well, you have to, you're going to the left two of these, so you're, you know, going left three, going left another three. So you, you're pulling it to the left. You're pulling the number, the decimal place stays where it is. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's three, four, two, seven, one, two, three, four, five nanometers. And now I've let the decimal place disappear because four sig figs, four sig figs, four sig figs, four sig figs. You want to retain the appropriate number of significant figures. There are other units. Uh, for example, there's uh, deca and hecta or hecta. And between... Uh, you know, the nothing 
and Kilo. There's also Senti and Desi in between Melee and the uh, the Zero. Um, Melee in the center, excuse me. The only one of those you're likely to see is Senti, you know, such as a centimeter. Senti is represented by the letter C, and it's one one hundredth of a, uh, a normal unit. There are 100 centimeters in a meter. Okay. I left that out because, like I said, I wanted to make this simpler, you know. You jump to the left, you move the decimal places to the right, three. Jump to the left, jump to the left, and it's always a step of three. To the right, to the right, three, and three. Okay. So, for visualization, if you're moving to the right, the number is moving to the right, the decimal place stays where it is. Number goes to the right, decimal place stays. Okay. If you're moving to the left, likewise. Decimal place, uh, boom, boom. The number will move to the left and the decimal place will stay where it is. Uh, for those of you who aren't so visual, uh, a way to remember it in words, um, a bigger unit equals, let's see, bigger unit equals smaller number, okay? So a kilogram is bigger than a gram. So when you go from grams to kilograms, the number gets smaller. The decimal place is moving to the left. And similarly, smaller unit equals bigger number. So a millimeter is smaller than a meter, so the number will have to get bigger, okay? So those are two different ways, um, you know, a, a, a visual way and a, and, a, and a wordy way to try and remember uh, how the numbers change as you go from one set of units to the other. Now, like I said, this is the older method. Um, the prefixes are older because um, it's, it's fairly easy for human beings to uh, master this sort of system. But, you know, putting in, you know, half a dozen, you know, N, mu, M, nothing, uh, K, M, G, you know, putting in those and telling your uh, computer to move the decimal place, <laughs> and that requires a bit of programming. And it's, it's possible, but it's kind of a hassle, and there is a simpler way to do it. And it's one that ultimately you'll have to learn because, like I said, it's catching on, it's becoming more popular. And in a lot of ways, it's easier to use. And that is scientific notation. Okay. So let's, uh, let's look at the, the, the diameter of the galaxy again. 9460731. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen meters. Now it is possible to you know deal with this using uh, uh, the prefixes. So you get rid of this and you have kilometers, get rid of these three, you have megameters, get rid of these three, you have gigameters, uh, these three, and you have terameters. And then my knowledge of prefixes starts to run out. And that's pretty much why we don't use prefixes uh, for the extremes. We use them in the middle still. But the fact is that uh, prefixes, you, you, you have to memorize a whole lot of crap. Uh, similarly, you know, getting smaller, looking at uh, uh, the hydrogen atom, 0.1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 7, 5 meters. You can, so that's meters. Uh, you get rid of these three, and you have millimeters. These three, and you'll have microns. Get rid of these three, and it's nanometers. These three, and it's femtometers. And boom, you put the decimal there, and it is 1.75 picometers. Um, damn it, oh, I got that backwards. Pico is here, this is femtometers. So the diameter of a hydrogen nucleus is 1.75 femtometers. So if you want to discuss, you know, 
things like that using prefixes, it requires a lot more memorization, and it's not necessarily easy to use even without a computer or calculator. So what we do instead is we use scientific notation, where we just move the decimal as far as it takes to get a number between 1 and 10. And so, like right here, you know, we moved the decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we got a number between 1 and 10, 1 1.75. So to write that in scientific notation, it is 1.75 times 10 negative 15 meters. Now, the 1.75 is the actual information. Those are our three sig figs. The 10 to the 15 is, or sorry, 10 to the negative 15 is all the zeros. That is the part that doesn't contain too much information. Okay, there's no actual measurement there. It's just telling us that it's a very, very small number. And you don't need all those zeros to do that. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, up here for the, uh, uh, the galaxy, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's 9.46073 times 10 to the 20th meters. Once again, we have secured all of the actual information, these six significant figures, and we have eliminated all of the zeros. And the 10 to the 20th tells us that this is a very, very big number. And we multiply by 10 to the 20th means... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it just tells us how many places the decimal place has moved. Okay. So if you want to recover the original number, 10 to the 20 means, you know, you move the decimal place to the right to get to the original number. 10 to the negative 15 means you move the decimal place to the left to get the original number. So a small number, it's 10 to the negative something. A big number is 10 to the positive something. Okay, so there are various ways you can remember this, you know, talking about which direction you have to move the decimal place and which direction you, you move it to get the decimal place back. Um, or just remember a positive exponent means a big number, negative exponent means a small number. And this is the system that we use in our computers because it's no longer, uh, you know, memorizing uh, prefixes, it's no longer just sifting the decimal place three spaces at a time. This can handle any number of decimal places, and you can do it all at once. <laughs> it's much simpler to program a computer this way. And honestly, it's, um, it's easier for people, too, once they get used to it. Uh, it. It can be kind of difficult to really grasp the difference in scale between like 10 to the negative 12th versus 10 to the negative 10th. Okay, oh, it's a hundred times bigger. Okay, okay, so okay, so we're talking about the difference between the nucleus of the atom and the, the, the entire atom. Okay, that's the size of the scale. Okay, the, the, a fly at the center of a football stadium and the entire football stadium. That's the scales we're talking Okay, you see, it, it, just, it takes practice no matter what. I mean, I mean, really, what does a million meters look like compared to a single meter? It's, you're not going to get a gestalt of that, you know, comparing a meter to a megameter. So it, it just takes practice regardless. But you're going to need to practice with both. Now I want to go ahead and show you um, some math regarding scientific notation. Your calculator can handle this up to a limit. Um, depending on the calculator, it might start to freak out if it gets bigger than 10 to the 99th or 10 to the 999th. Um, but uh, but we won't worry too much about that. What I want to show you is what it means to add and subtract or multiply and divide. Okay. Um, if you're using prefixes, uh, you need to get the prefixes the same. Okay. So uh, adding and subtracting, 
10 meters plus uh, 0 0.1 kilometer. Okay, you get them both the same. So one, two, three, zero, zero. And to get rid of the kilometer, fortunately that worked out nicely. So 100 kilometers plus 10 meters. Okay, um, this one runs out of sig figs first. So uh, one, one, zero, 100 meters plus 10 meters. Gotta be, I've got to be more careful. You should have called me on that. Somebody should have raised their hand and interrupted me. Okay, so it's 110 meters, which sig figs is going to round down to 100 meters. Um, for multiplication and division, you still have to get the prefixes the same. Um, 10 meters times 0 0.1 uh, kilometers. Um, you, yeah, you definitely need to get the prefixes the same. So you shift this to the right, and you're talking about 100 meters times 10 meters, and that's going to get you 1,000 square meters. One sig fig, one sig fig, your answer has to have one sig fig, and it does. Okay. Um, so just remember, you know, multiplication means invisible one, invisible one, you're adding your exponents. So one plus one is two. That's where that came from. Subtraction and division work kind of the same way. So subtraction, uh, let's use uh, 3.4 kilograms minus uh, 120 grams. Let's go ahead and shift this to three. So it's 0.12, get rid of the zero because of sig figs, kilograms. So 3.4 kilograms minus 0 0.12 kilograms. Okay, so two sig figs, two sig figs. Now the number of sig figs doesn't matter. It's whichever one runs out of sig figs first. So eight, two, three. So when you round this, it's 3.3 .3 kilograms. And division, I'll try and make this somewhat easy on myself. Uh, division, 1.44 uh, gigameters divided by 0 0.12 megameters. Hopefully this will uh, work out for me. Um, let's see, we shifted that. Okay, so it's going to be one, two, three. Uh, huh. Should not be trying to do this in my head. Um, but it's going to be 1,440 uh, megameters divided by 0 0.12 megameters. Megameters. Uh, that's going to be equal to... Twelve thousand megameters, or if you um, you know you can shift it back. That's twelve gigameters. Oops, twelve gigameters. Okay, uh, three sig figs and two sig figs. All right. Now I'm going to show you uh, scientific notation, just in case you know your calculator runs out of batteries or whatever. Adding and subtracting with scientific notation, you don't have to get the units the same. You have to get the exponents the same. So um, 1.75 times 10 to the negative 15th meters minus um, 7.76 times 10 to the negative 16th meters. Okay, the units are already the same, but you can't just add or subtract these. What you need to do is you need to get the exponents the same. That's, that's if you want to add these or subtract these by hand. Okay? So what you can do is you can make this over here on the right. You can turn that from a 16 into a 15 just by moving this to the left one. So that would get you 0 0.776 times 10 to the negative 15th meters. 
Okay, similarly, you could move this one to the right, okay, which would give you 17.5 times 10 to the negative 16th meters. Um, so you can do either one. You don't want to do both. Okay? So that would give you 1.75 times 10 to the negative 15th meters minus 0 0.776 times 10 to the negative 16th, or nope, 15th meters. And then you just treat it like a regular subtraction problem. Okay? Uh, 4, 7, 9, zero times 10 to the negative 15th meters. And then, you know, you round it. That gets you 0 0.97 times 10 to the negative 15th meters. But, you know, for scientific notation, you really do want this between uh, 1 and 10. So you move the decimal place 1 to the right. Remember, moving it to the right, you're making um, this change. So it's going to be 9.7 times 10 to the negative 16th meters. Okay. You move the decimal place to the right, the exponent gets smaller. Decimal right, exponent down. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and just to show you that you're going to get the same answer either way, you know, 17.5 times 10 to the negative 16th meters minus 7.76 times 10 to the negative 16th meters. Okay, this is going to be times 10 to the negative 16th. That's not going to change. Here's that. And then you subtract, and for 7.9, oh, look at that. It worked out exactly the same. You round it and 9.7 times 10 to the negative 16th meters is your answer either way. Now, hopefully your calculator won't run out of batteries and so on. But, you know, just in case. You know, it's, it's not really uh, that much more difficult. It's not at all more difficult than regular addition or subtraction. You just have to remember to shift decimal places around and you have to remember how that affects the exponent. Moving the decimal place to the right moves the exponent down. Decimal right, exponent down. Okay, and decimal left, exponent up. Okay, so maybe you just remember clockwise? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Multiplication and division is more difficult. What happens there? is I'm going to show you multiplication. Division works in much the same way. So let's say 3.75 times 10 to the 8th multiplied by uh, 8.12 times 10 to the negative third. Meters and meters. Dum -dum -dum -dum. Okay, so you don't have to get the, uh, uh, the exponents lined up. So instead, what you do is 3.75 times 10 to the 8th times 8.12 times 10 to the negative third. Well, the exponent here is going to be times 10 to the 5th. Okay, multiplication means you're adding exponents. Okay, multiplication means add the exponents. So 8 plus negative 3 is 5. And then it's just division, or I'm sorry, multiplication as usual. Uh, 0, 5, uh, 7, uh, 5, 7, 3, uh, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 5, 4, 0, oh. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 30.45 times 10 to the 5th. And we have 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs. We need 3 sig figs here. That becomes 30.5 times 10 to the 5th. But you want a number between 1 and 10, so it becomes 3.05 times 10 to the 6th. Decimal place goes left, exponent goes up. All right.
Now let's go ahead and show you an example of division. Uh, so here's division, uh, 1.50 times 10 to the negative third divided by 7.50 times 10 to the negative fourth. Well, this is going to work in much the same way. Okay. Um, this divided by that. So this is divided, this and this is subtraction. Division equals subtraction. Okay. Divide the numbers, subtract the exponents. Multiply the numbers, add the exponents. All right. Um, so to uh, cut to the chase, it is 2.00 times 10 to the negative third. No, excuse me. It's just 2.00. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot um, units. So let's go with uh, kilometers and hours. So it's two hours. No, no, sorry. Two kilometers per hour. There we go. So, and then of course you divide these as well. Got to be careful about that. And uh, ooh, I, I deleted my multiplication, so I can't fix the units on that, but I'm pretty sure it's square meters. Okay, so that is um, uh, division. Uh, let's see, that's uh, 1.50, uh, 7.50 times 10 to the negative third times 10 to the negative fourth. Hmm. Subtract. So negative three minus negative four gets you positive one, so 10 to the positive one. Then uh, 1.50 divided by 7.50, uh, 0 0.200 times 10 to the positive one. All right, and then of course you want a number between one and 10, so you move that to the right. Move the decimal to the right, the exponent goes down, so it's 2.00 times 10 to the zero. Anything raised to the zero is just one. Anything times one is just itself, so it's just 2.00. Okay. All right. <sighs> now, uh, I've been talking about calculators a lot. I've shown you how to do these by hand. Hopefully, I know that, and uh, maybe a little bit of practice if you're feeling um, insecure about the uh, functionality of your calculator. But uh, your calculator will always, always, always have a button. Okay, um, what you'll do is you'll type in your number, 1.50, and then you'll hit uh, a button. Okay, depending on the calculator, that button can uh, look a couple of different ways. Um, the, the Texas Instruments calculators, they'll have a button with two capital E's. Okay, you press that, and it'll write out a lowercase e or a capital E, again, depending upon the system. And then you will uh, type in, you know, the exponents. So in this case, negative three. And what it will uh, put on the screen will probably be something like this. 1.50 E negative three. And that means 1.50 times 10 to the negative third. Uh, some other calculators, like a Casio calculator, um, instead of the double E, it will have times 10 to the X. Okay, and that just means the exact same thing. And uh, they will uh, probably actually write it out for you as 1.50 times 10 to the negative third. Or if it's uh, not a, uh, an awesome calculator, um, it might be 1.50 times 10 negative 3. So be careful um, about... Uh, uh, about your calculator and what it displays. Okay, you're going to have to be careful about what it writes, about what it shows you, uh, because it might not be awesome. So um, be familiar with your calculator. Be familiar with how it handles scientific notation. 
and be familiar with how you put scientific notation in. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend that you do not write in 1.50 times 10 caret negative 3, where the caret means uh, raise it to that power or what have you, um, because that can screw you up. What can happen is, you know, you'll say 1.50 times 10, let's say, how do you bring it out? And then you'll hit divided by 7.50 times 10 to the negative 4. Let's. And your calculator will not give you the answer of number of, of 2. Okay. Instead, your calculator will give you the answer of 2 times 10 to the negative 7. And that's not right. It may not be easy to see where your calculator got it wrong, but your calculator is not clever. It doesn't know what you're trying to do when you write in times 10 to the negative 4. Okay? It doesn't realize you're doing you no know, scientific notation like these up here. Okay? Instead, it will take it literally as, first you multiply by that, once you have that answer, you divide by 7.5. And once you have that answer, you multiply by 10 to the negative fourth. So that's why it would give you that answer that's wrong by a factor of 10 million. Okay. So don't put it in that way. Find out. If, if you're not sure, you can ask me, and I will show you on your calculator uh, how to put in scientific notation. Because if you put in, you know, like this right here, you'll get the wrong answer a lot of the time. Okay, you want to use scientific notation because your calculator will interpret that the way you intend it to. Uh, and one last thing before we move on. Um, this is another use of the scientific notation. Um, something that it's valuable for. Remember I asked uh, how can you represent that this has two sig figs? That is what scientific notation can get you. Because when you convert this to scientific notation, it's 1 times 10 to the second. 1.0 times 10 to the second is the same number, but with two significant figures. That is the advantage of scientific notation, in that uh, putting... Um, and shifting the decimal place, it lets you control which zeros are trailing zeros after the decimal place and which aren't. You have much more control over how the number is written. When you write it in scientific notation, you have the choice about what numbers to include. You get to include all the significant figures and only the significant figures. No more um, of the uh, placeholder zeros. 9, 4, 6, 0, 7, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, you don't need those. Okay, those, those uh, trailing zeros for huge numbers and the leading zeros for tiny numbers, you can get rid of those. Okay, those are just there to show that the number is tiny or huge, and that's now what the exponential is for. You don't need them anymore. You only need to show significant figures. So scientific notation has that incredibly valuable property that it makes it easy to display um, both, you know, just a number, whether it's big or small, and only significant figures. Okay, now let's move on to what I said we were going to talk about at the beginning, dimensional analysis. Okay, uh, dimensional analysis means looking at your units. Okay, so um, every measurement is a number and a unit. Okay, they both go together to be the measurement. Every measurement is a record of some property of an object or a system, or, you know, whatever, you're, whatever it is you're looking at and measuring. So, for example, um, you know, 10.0 meters is telling you the length of something that you've measured. It's 10 meters long. Um, uh, 35.3 seconds tells you that uh, some process of some kind took 35.3 seconds. Um, 25.7 kilometers per minute tells you that something was really screaming along, okay, moving 25.7 kilometers every single minute, okay, it tells you its speed, 
dimensional analysis tells you that you're looking at a measurement every time you have a, a unit, you're looking at a measurement, not just some random number. It also tells you what property of the system you're considering. You know, are you talking about the length? Are you talking about the, the, the time it took? Are you talking about um, how, how fast it was going? Or um, say 273.15 Kelvin, you know, how hot the system was. Okay, it tells you that you're measuring some sort of property. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of math. Okay. Now, addition and subtraction, uh, only if the units match. Okay. So remember talking about prefixes? Um, it's not just that the prefixes have to be the same. You have to be doing the same property. Okay, 3.0 meters plus 1.5 meters equals 4.5 meters, right? Okay, that's sensible, okay? You're talking about if you travel three meters and then you travel an additional 1.5 meters, how far have you gone? 4.5 meters. But 3.0 meters plus 1.5 grams equals, you know, um, a poop emoji, okay? There, there's, there's no sense there. It doesn't make sense, okay? You can only add and subtract if it's the same property. And you can't add things with different units. That just does not work. Does not compute. Doesn't make sense. But multiplication and division, anything goes. Okay, you can do more or less whatever you want. Okay, so um, uh, twenty-five point three kilometers per minute times uh, uh, thirty-five point four seconds. That's totally valid. You can do that. That uh, there, there's no problem there. Um, the answer would be eight hundred and ninety-six kilometer seconds per minute, which is why I really, really recommend that you convert from seconds to minutes here. Um, so you know, before you do this problem, uh, thirty-five point four seconds times 60 seconds per minute. Uh, nope, that's backwards. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Excuse me while I pretend I never wrote that. Times one minute per 60 seconds. Seconds will cancel out and leave you with uh, 0.590 minutes. So 25.3 kilometers per minute times 0 0.590 minutes is equal to minutes cancel because one's on the top, one's on the bottom. I'll get into that more in just a little bit. 14.9 kilometers. Okay, like I said, it was going really, really fast. Okay, so how to handle units in multiplication and division. Well, remember when I was talking about scientific notation, multiplication and division, you know, the exponents, you know, multiplication means addition, uh, division means subtraction. The same thing is happening here. Okay, so 25.3 kilometers per minute. Um, what that actually means, you know, if you were to write it out, you know, in the most explicit way possible, uh, that should be 25.3. So 25.3 kilometers to the first power, minute to the minus one. Okay. Um, so remember, division means subtraction of exponents. Okay. So multiplying by um, minutes to the negative one is the same as dividing by minutes to the first power. Okay. And then you multiply by 0 0.590 minutes raised to the first power. So when you write this out, okay, you, uh, you end up with the 14.9 uh, kilometers to the first power times minutes to the negative one times minutes to the positive one. Multiplication means addition of the exponents. Negative one plus positive one is equal to zero. Anything raised to the zero power is just one. It sort of disappears. So minutes to the first power equals one. Okay, the units are gone. Sorry, minutes to the zero power. 
Okay, that, that unit just vanishes. It disappears. That's what I meant when I said that uh, the units cancel out. Okay, so uh, let's see. Similarly, if somebody drives, you know, 100.0 kilometers in 15 minutes, what's his speed in kilometers per hour? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and convert this. That's 0 0.25 hours. Okay. And then it's just a matter of 100.0 kilometers divided by 0 0.25 hours. And that is um, 2,500 kilometers per hour. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, if you were to uh, write that out more explicitly, though. Oh no, I, I, I'm sorry, I got that math wrong. Let me let me go ahead and correct that. One hundred point zero uh, divided by point two five. Boom 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 boom. Uh, four oh 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 four thousand kilometers per hour but we need to retain the sig figs. We had two here and four here. So it's 4.0 times 10 to the third kilometers per hour. Okay, so that's how we retain the two sig figs. That was a lucky break. All right, so um, what was I going to? Oh, right, writing it out more explicitly. Um, so if you want to write it out all on a single line, that's how I tend to prefer to do it. 100... 0 0.0 kilometers divided by 0 0.25 hours. Remember back to elementary school, um, you know, uh, dividing fractions, you know, it was, uh, I, I, I learned it as copy, change, flip, because that, that rolls off the tongue, copy, change, flip. Okay, so that means that you just, mm, let's go ahead up here, 100.0, uh, you just copy the first number, you change division to multiplication, and then you flip that fraction, 0.25 hours, okay? So that's one way of handling this sort of thing. Um, dividing by 0.25 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 0.25. Is it? Ah, okay. Uh, this should be 10 to the second. I'm making a lot of mistakes. I'm sorry. Because, you know, I just screwed up my math. I mean, I, I, you definitely double check yourself and don't hurry. <laughs> it's 400 kilometers per hour, not 5,000. All right, so 100.0 kilometers times 0.25, or times 1 over 0.25 hours. And then, you know, the reason you might want to write it out like this is because you just add up all the stuff on the top, or you add exponents on the top, you add exponents on the bottom. Whatever is on the top stays on the top. Whatever is on the bottom stays on the bottom. So 100.0 kilometers over 0 0.25 hours is equal to 100.0 over 0 0.25 kilometers per hour. All right, let's show you a slightly more complicated problem. What if the division problem you were doing was 4.0 times 10 to the second kilometers per hour divided by 3,600 seconds per hour? That could be fairly complicated, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually it could. Um, what you're going to end up with, though, 0 0.11 times, oh, no, just 0 0.11 kilometers per second. Uh, yes, uh, that is the actual answer, unless I've screwed up. Don't worry, we'll be double-checking as we go along. Now, but what this will do for us is it will give us uh, the opportunity to look at uh, a couple of different ways of solving this. 
one is copy change flip. So 4.0 times 10 to the second kilometers per hour. Just copy, change this to multiplication, change this to 3,600 uh, seconds per hour on the bottom. Okay. That didn't seem to help, did it? Well, actually, it kind of did. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to erase our units. So this is kilometers per hour, and this was uh, seconds per hour. So this remains the same, kilometers per hour, but this is seconds per hour. Okay. When we flipped it, we also flipped the units. So now we have hours on the bottom, hours on the top, and they cancel out, leaving us with 0.11 kilometers per second because you have kilometers on the top seconds on the bottom Ew, that's handy okay another way of looking at it is 4.0 times 10 to the second kilometers per hour divided by 3600 seconds per hour um, and yes, uh, this, this works for sig figs, because this right here is a conversion factor, and so it has infinite uh, sig figs. Um, so now this one, though, uh, down here on the bottom, uh, 4.0 times into the second kilometers per hour, um, and 3,600 seconds per hour. So that would be equal to 4.0 times 10 to the second over 3,600. That's the number portion. And then kilometers per hour over seconds per hour. And this is where things might look complicated. If it's on the top, it stays where it is. If it's on the bottom, it flips to the other side. So top stays, bottom goes. Okay. So this hour right here is going to go down to the bottom, and this one here is going to come out to the top. Kilometer and seconds are going to stay where they are, giving us 400 over 3,600 kilometer hour over second hour. And once again, we have something on the bottom and something on the top. They disappear. 4 over 36 is 1 ninth, and that gets us 0 0.11 kilometers per second. Okay. Um, I'm trying to give you multiple ways of dealing with units, um, just because you're going to have to do math. That's really all there is to it. And you need to deal with the units correctly. Okay? You need to be able to convert from one sort of units to another sort of units. And you need to be able to, you know, cancel units out and shift them around when it's appropriate. You need to be able to figure out how to get units where you need them to go. Okay. So that's why I'm trying to show it to you in a couple of different ways. Um, but again, this is going to take practice. You're, you're just not going to get it unless you practice. I'm going to try and help you with that. That's what class is for. But practice, practice, practice. No substitute for it. Now let's go ahead and work through a dimensional analysis problem. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to analyze the dimensions, the units. Okay, so look at the units. Okay, so Lindsay has a car that weighs 2,500.0 kilograms. It has a fuel efficiency of 15.0 kilometers per liter, going 80.5 kilometers per hour for three hours. How much fuel in liters does Lindsay use? Oh, that's a question mark. 
Okay. So, you analyze the dimensions. That means you look at what you want to get to, and you look at what you have. Now, right off the bat, this 2,500 kilograms is unnecessary information. It doesn't give us anything. It's not helping us because it, it's and there, nothing else has kilograms in it. Okay, we don't want kilograms. None of the other numbers, none of the other measurements, I should say, has kilograms in it, so that doesn't help us. But now we have kilometers per hour, kilometers per liter, and hour. So there is a way to get from what we have to what we want. So the first thing I'm going to say is, here's the only thing that has liters in it, is our first measurement, is 15.0 kilometers per liter. We want our answer in liters. That means liters has to be on the top. So we're going to go ahead and flip this number. 15.0 liters Oops, sorry. Nope, that's one liter per 15.0 kilometers. Okay, where did that one come from? Uh, 15 is the same thing as 15 divided by one. Okay, so that's where that one came from. So one liter for every 15 kilometers. Now, we need to get rid of this kilometers here. Okay, our answer cannot include kilometers, so we need to multiply by something that has kilometers on the top. Well, we have something with kilometers. It's this second measurement, 80.5 kilometers per hour. So 80.5 kilometers for every one hour. Okay, so kilometers is going to cancel. That leaves us with liters per hour. But, you know, we have hours, so we're going to be okay. Okay, we're making progress is what I'm trying to say. So let's go ahead and do this math. Okay, so it's 80.5 divided by 15.0 is equal to 5.37 liters per hour. Okay, so now we need to get rid of those hours. Fortunately, there is an easy method on hand to do exactly that. We multiply by three hours. Okay, hours on the top, hours on the bottom, they cancel, and that's going to leave us with 16.1 liters. So that is our answer. Okay, if Lindsay drives um, for three hours at 80.5 kilometers per hour in a car that gets 15.0 kilometers per liter, Going to get 16, going to use 16.1 liters of gas. Okay, so that is dimensional analysis. You look at what you have and you look at what you want and you just use what you want or use what you have to get to what you want. Okay, and that will often mean flipping numbers around upside down, it'll often mean multiplying by numbers or dividing by numbers. Okay. Or sorry, measurements. Okay, flipping measurements, multiplying by measurements, things like that. Okay, if you do that, you will eventually get to where you want to go, assuming you have enough information. If you don't have enough information, you just can't solve the problem. And I probably won't give you any problems to solve without giving you the information necessary to solve them. Okay, so uh, that's how you solve that sort of problem. Uh, practice, 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 practice. Practice, practice, practice. And I will see you later.